class, what's up? We're starting this year in Algebra 2 with Section 4.1, Quadratic Equations and Transformations. Now, the important thing about what we're doing uh, with Section 4.1 is it's the foundation of every section, and it's going to build upon it. So it's going to be very important that you watch this video very closely, and make sure you come in for some extra help in the mornings if you need some extra help, okay? The way we always want to get started with notes at home, the part that I'm going to check in class, is I want you guys to please write down the title here, which is Quadratic Functions and Transformations, and always write down the objective. Okay, so as we go through these videos, sometimes I might go a little fast. Now, the cool thing is, is you can hit pause, you can hit go to rewind, and you can go back and watch it, okay? Um, but I'm going to go ahead and keep on moving here. But if you need more time, just go ahead and hit pause and make sure uh, that you get the title and the objective down. So when we're studying for tests and quizzes, it's a piece of cake to go back and look at what you need to know. All right, here we go. So transforming polynomial functions. Okay, we're gonna use reflections, stretches, and shrinks, translations to transform a polynomial function. Now, the other piece of notes I want you to write down is this. When we do these in class, and once again, it's the building blocks of what we do here going forward, okay? What we're going to do is we're gonna look at what we call reflections, stretches, and shrinks, and translations. And if we wanna make sure we graph correctly the transformation of the polynomial function, we want to do them in that order of one, two, and three, okay? And it's kind of nice because it goes alphabetically. R for reflections, S for stretches and shrinks, and T for translations, okay? So make sure you hit pause and you write that down. And then we're just going to get it, get it, get it. The very first uh, parent function that we're looking at right now in Algebra 2 is Y equals X squared. Now, when you look at the graph of Y equals X squared, hopefully you guys at home know what that dude looks like. It looks like a cube. It's a parabola, okay? And a parabola, a U, can be what we call concave up, which it goes up, or it actually could be concave down, where it goes down. Now, whenever we do parent functions, we're gonna introduce some very important points, okay? And when dealing with Y equals X squared, which is our parabola or our quadratic function, there are some points that we wanna consider. Okay, the first one is zero. Why? Because, hey, if x is zero, I put a zero in here, and I do zero squared, which is zero. Another good point to choose is each or one. Okay, and if I put a one in here, and I do one squared, I get each or one. Okay, another good number to pick is nibon two. And if I put a two in here and square it, I get bow. Okay, now the important thing about a quadratic function is, is it is symmetric. And we are going to use symmetry to make our lives easier. But in order to do that, you need to know what the vertex is. Now, the vertex is going to be that bad boy right there, which means if it's a vertex, it's going to be a minimum or a maximum value on our parabola. And for this case, it's going to be right there. Okay, and then we're at 1, 1, and then we're at 2, 4. Now, we said earlier that 0, 0 was the vertex. So that means that it's going to be symmetric, okay? And there's one half of my parabola. Now, when we say it's going to be symmetric, that means there's going to be what we call an axis of symmetry, okay? And the axis of symmetry is going to be at where the vertex is, the x value. So there's going to be what we call this axis of symmetry. We're going to make it dashed. Why do we make it dashed? Because it's not really part of the graph. That is at x equals zero. That is called the axis of symmetry. And so you want to make sure you're taking really good notes at home. Okay. So like right now you should wrote down that axis of symmetry. Okay, for a parabola goes right through the vertex and it is whatever the x value is. So for this case, it's x equals zero. And what that means is it's nice. We can use symmetry. What does that mean? If one, if you go down that line of symmetry and that's one away. That means there's going to be a symmetric point one away to the left. Let's look at 2, 4. Where's that from the line of symmetry? It's 2 to the right, so 2 to the left. Sweetie sweet, which means I only have to find three points and then just make sure I graph it really nice. Booyah! Parent function done, Joe! It's a you! Okay, that's it. And that's my parabola. Now, there's a lot of things we want to answer when we deal with parabolas, okay? So I'm going to change my color here, all right? So you know what you have to identify. 
we need to identify what the vertex is. We identify that by a point, which is zero comma zero. We want to identify what the axis of symmetry is. Okay, and the axis of symmetry, remember, goes right down that vertex, which would be the x coordinate of the vertex, which would be x equals zero. We want to say if there's a max or a minimum value. Now, if you look here, that looks like it's a minimum, right? Because it's the smallest two. So whenever you have a vertex, it means you're going to have a max or min value. In this case, we would have a min value of y equals zero. And the value is always going to be the y of the vertex. Okay, next we deal with the domain and the range. Okay, and the domain for a, for a polynomial function is going to be negative infinity to infinity, or we say all real numbers. Now the range gets a little bit tougher. Now domain, what that refers to is it's what values of x are on this graph. And believe it or not, all values of x are on this graph. It goes forever to the left because it goes forever up, and it goes forever to the right. Okay, it goes forever that way and forever that way. But if you look, range deals with the y's, and it doesn't go forever down, and it doesn't go forever up. So that means the range is going to be a little bit different here. And if you look here, it does go forever up, but it doesn't go forever down. What is the minimum value? What did we say? Oh, we said it was zero. So that means it goes from zero to infinity. You can never have a bracket around infinity, but we are going to put a bracket around zero. Why? Because it's colored in right there. And booyah, problem done so. Nice and easy, job on easy. Not bad, right? So make sure you take those good notes. You got to go ahead and re hit rewind. Go ahead and hit that rewind button. Now you might be saying, Mr. T, we didn't do anything that dealt with those transformations that you were talking about, the reflection stretches or shrinks, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to deal with what we call right here. I want you to write that in your notes, and that's called vertex form. Vertex form of a quadratic function. Okay, and when we deal with the vertex form of a quadratic function and we graph it, we're going to use transformations to help us to graph it. And it's kind of nice because it's going to be a lot easier than maybe doing a whole bunch of uh, table of values and stuff like that, okay? And so this next piece of notes is going to be your most important piece of notes for our first quiz and test that we're going to have in ALG 2 this year, okay? And so let's go ahead and make up a problem. Number one y equals 2, x minus 3, square, which makes it a quadratic, plus 4. Right? And if you look at this, it's a quadratic function. How do I know it's a quadratic function? Because it mirrors my parent function of y equals x squared. Okay? Now, there's a lot of stuff added to that, right? And if we go back to here, there's an, there's an A, there's an H, and there's a K. Right? Each one of those are going to have a major influence of what our graph is going to look like in our transformations. Okay, and what we're going to do is, is we're going to say, how is the blue different from the red? Or how is the red different from the blue, right? And the way we do that is first, we're going to use our parent function. Remember, I gave you three points you need to know, which is 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. And then we're always going to circle our vertex because that is so, so, so important. And then we're just going, going to go ahead and do what we call RST. We're going to RST this bad boy. What the heck does that mean? RST. Okay. Now, to know if there's a reflection, we're going to look at our A. And if you go back here, what's the A? It's whatever's in front of the parentheses. And all I have to do is look at that number. It's 2, right? It's this number 2 right here. And I'm going to say, hey, is that guy negative or is it positive? If it's negative, there's a reflection. If there's not, there's no reflection. So since there's no negative there, we're going to say no vertical reflection. Okay? And we're always going to say no vertical reflection over the x-axis. Okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we'll see when we do one that has a vertical reflection. Okay, Gates? Next, we go to the S, which means would there be a stretch or shrink? And once again, the first, the R and the S all have to deal with what comes first, which is that A value, which is the 2. Okay? Now, there's a 2 there. Now, my question to you guys at home is 2 bigger than 1. Oh, show 2 is bigger than 1, right? 
$2 is bigger than $1. Uh, so that means there's going to be, if, if the number's bigger than one, then we say there's a Anything that's on the outside of the parentheses means it's going to be affected vertically. Okay, so that means there's a vertical stretch by Nibon or two. Okay, now if the number is between zero and one, that, and it's on the outside, remember everything on the outside is vertically. Okay, so since it's, if the number is between zero and one, like one half, three fourths, two thirds, then we would say it's a vertical shrink. But that's the kind of stuff you do in pre-calc, okay? In this class, we're just going to deal with stretches, which is nice and easy, job on easy. Last is translation. Now, if you notice, that three is on the inside. So since that three is on the inside, it's going to affect it horizontally, which in our class, we're just going to say left or right. It's a translation. It's going to move your graph left or right. Now, the tricky thing about this is, look at this. The formula says X minus H. So what would H be in this one problem? H would be a positive 3, believe it or not, right? If it was a negative 3, it would have changed it. Two negatives makes a positive. So that 3, believe it or not, is positive. So we're going to say 3 units horizontally, which would mean to the right, okay? And then if you look on the outside, that K is plus K, right? And if that's a plus K, then that just, you just do what it says. That's going to, on the outside, so it's going to move it vertically, either up or down, and that would be 4 units up. Okay. Now, how does all of this stuff affect this graph? Well, we're going to take this right here and we're going to transform it. What the heck does that mean, Mr. T? All right. Well, let's go ahead. And let's see what the reflection first. And what did we say? We said there was no vertical reflections. Guess what? Nothing changes. Sweetie, sweet. That's still the vertex. Okay. Next, we have a stretch or shrink. And what we're doing here is we're doing all of part A, which is awesome. All done for us, okay? S is a stretch or shrink. Now, what does that do? Vertically, remember vertically, anything on the outside messes with the Y. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna look at our reflection. You always go to the one before it, and we're gonna change all of the Ys by two. We're gonna multiply all of them by two. We're gonna stretch those Ys, stretch them, stretch. Right, get Mr. Tlacotone. Okay, we're gonna stretch them all by two. All right, so what does that mean? That means all of the X's are gonna stay the same, zero, one, two, but it's gonna be zero times two, which is zero, one times two, which is two, four times two, which is hachi, or eight, okay? Next, okay, next, what do we do? Well, first, it's important to always know what your vertex is. That's the V, 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 vertex is so important, helps me out with so much, right? Um, T next is a translation, and we use the graph from before, or the table of values from before, okay? Now, how do I use that? Well, it says three to the right. Let's just do it one at a time. Well, three to the right. Well, that means horizontally, right? So that means I'm going to change the X's by three. So let's change all of the X's by three. It's a plus three because three to the right. So it's zero plus three is three. One plus three is four. Two plus three is five. Okay, four up. Once again, plus, right? Four up. Zero plus four is four. Two plus four is six. A plus four is 12. Okay, and then I, I kind of made some marks here. So let's see if we can get rid of some of those bad boys. See ya. And then all I have to do is graph this guy. Once again, that is the vertex. So important, right? Vertex. Okay, so boom. Vertex. Three times four. Graph the function. Let's go. All right. So uh, here we go. Let's graph this guy. Three comma four. One, two, three comma four. Boom, yeah. That's the vertex. Maybe I should put a little V by that bad boy. Okay, what am I next? Four comma six, booyah. And then five comma 12 would be way up there. And remember, when I graph those three, that's the first half. Ooh, it looks like it was stretched. Why? There was a vertical stretch. Okay, now remember, what's important next? Ooh, identify the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is the X value, whoops, is the x value of the vertex. So the x equals three, that's important. Why is that important? Because it gives me the other half of the parabola. And so this point is one to the right, so one to the left. Two to the right, two to the left. And then I have this beautiful graph of a parabola. I would say mine kind of looks like a V, shame on me. That guy better have a nice little curvature at the bottom right because it's a U, it's concave up. And then it says, do we have a max or min value? Um, let's see, that would definitely be a min and it would be a minimum.
value of y equals what was my y equals false and then state the domain in the range i don't i don't know if i have enough room down here you know i do domain is always negative infinity to infinity and the range name. is this guy going up forever or down forever well it's definitely going up forever so that means it's going to go to infinity because it's going up forever Excuse, excuse. excuse me, but there is a minimum value. We said it was four, so we go four. I almost put a parenthesis, shame on me, and it looks like that. Okay, and that's it. All right, we're going to do one more of these guys, and we have one little last set of problems we've got to do. Uh, and then that's your first video of the year. Hopefully it went all right. Uh, make sure you bring your questions to class, right? You're going to have like a little, a little problem here to make sure you're good to go, right? When you walk in the door tomorrow. Okay, so make sure this is good. Come in for some help if you guys need it, okay? All right, here we go. So let's do another problem. Y equals, okay, let's go negative three. Let's go X plus two squared. Uh, let's go minus, itchy, minus one. Now, once again, what would this guy's parent function be? Well, its parent function would be Y equals X squared, which is a parabola that goes up, okay? And then remember, we're dealing with 3.001142. Or two, whoa, two, four. Okay, and if you ever forget those values, you just plug them in there and they come up magically for you. Zero squared, one squared, two squared. Okay, now remember to get this bad boy started, we do a RST. Okay, now remember what's the R and the S? They all come from the number that's in the front, it's outside, so that means it's going to affect it vertically, right? Now there is a negative on the outside. So since there's a negative on the outside, we say that there is a vertical reflection, okay? And we say that it's over the x-axis. So what's interesting, instead of going up, we're gonna, right, instead of you going up, we're gonna reflect it, it's gonna be going down, okay? So instead of going up like this, it's going to reflect and it's gonna go down. And that's important to notice right off the bat because that's what our final answer better look like. Okay, let's go to the next guy. Is there a stretch or a shrink? There for sure is there's a vertical stretch. And some people are going to say, Mr. T, it's a shrink. No, it's not. The negative is gone. It's gone. Okay, the negative is gone. We took care of it, right? The negative is gone. We took care of that with reflection. So when we look at if there's a stretch or a shrink, we just look at that number three. Okay, that number three. Is that number three bigger than one? Yes, it is. So it's a vertical stretch. Okay? Of three. All right, the negative gets taken care of by that reflection, and then the three is how much we're going to stretch it. So that means this guy is going to be stretched. And if he stretched me up, I'd be even skinnier, right? So it's going to be a pretty skinny giraffe. Okay, and then the translation that says a plus two there. Well, if we go back to our notes right here, um, look at that. That's minus h. So how could it turn into a plus two? Only way it could turn into a plus two if it was a negative two. Does that kind of make sense, class? So best way to think of it is, hey, it's just the opposite, right? So if it's a plus in the inside, in the inside only. Inside means horizontally, remember. Outside vertically, inside horizontally. So that would mean two units are going to be left. So there's really a negative two in there. And then mean one unit down because whatever's on the outside, we do whatever that says. Okay, so then now what do we do? Well, hey, we described our transformations, okay? We want to identify the vertex and graph it. So to do that, we need some points to work. Okay, and this time, guess what? We do have a reflection. Checky, checky, right? So that is going to change things. And remember, it's vertical. Vertical changes the Ys, and it's going to flip it. So guess what happens? It's going to vertically flip it, which means it's going to change all of these Ys and change their signs. It's going to be zero, zero, because we can't change zero signs, but it's going to be one, negative one, and it's going to be two, negative four. Now, we only change the Ys. Why? Because that negative is on the outside which means it's affecting it vertically. And when it's vertically, we only change the y's, okay? And then we go to our stretch or shrink. Remember, if it's between zero and one, it's a shrink. But since it's bigger than one, which is the number three, and remember, we're not referring to the negative because we already took care of that, okay? So there's a vertical stretch by three. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change all of the y's by three. Vertex, so if you know, since the vertex is zero, zero for the first two steps, it's never gonna change. 1, negative 3, 2, negative 12. How about that, right? 
multiplying everything by three. And then my last thing is my translations. We're going to move that bad boy. How much up, down, left, right do we go? We, we said two units to the left. What would it mean to go as two units to the left? What's well, horizontally, so that means you're going to take away two from all of the x values, right? Because x is horizontally. So zero minus two is negative two. One minus two is negative one. Two minus two is zero. And then we're going to go one down. So that means you're going to change all of the y's by one. So zero minus one is negative one. Negative three minus one is negative four. Negative 12 minus one is negative 13. My favorite number, 13. Okay, I'm going to try to erase some of this stuff because now we're going to grab it. It won't be easy to answer all of the other questions. And remember, the most important thing right now is that vertex, right? All right, negative two, negative one. Boom, right there, right? Okay. Uh, negative one, negative four. Oh, snap. What? I'm going down? Well, that makes sense, remember? Because that would be concave up. That would be concave down. That'd be a parabola going down, right? And this is awesome because that's what we're supposed to be doing is going down. And then I'm running out of space, but it's down there. And remember, that's a half of the parabola. Well, how that, Mr. T, how the heck do I get the other half? Well, to get the other half, I need to know what the vertex is. I need to know what the axis of symmetry is. Right, so that's a line going smack dab right down here. Right, we should always label it to dash because it's not really part of the graph, but it helps me to graph it. And remember, it helps me to get two other points. If that's one away from the axis of symmetry, that's one away from the axis of symmetry. If this guy's two away from the axis of symmetry, then that's two away from the axis of symmetry. Remember, that's really a negative 13, right? And then we should make it look like it, a nice little curve right there. Okay, so that's my vertex right there. Oh, snap. Well, this time, that is a maximum value, right, of y equals, what was the y value? Negative each, negative one, okay? So that's interesting, but that makes sense. That's the highest that boy goes. Now, domain is always negative infinity to infinity, so you'll never have to even think about that bad boy. But the range is different here because it goes down, down forever. And whenever you write this stuff in interval notation, like, like we want to do what math Excel is going to ask you to do, then that means we have to make sure we write the smallest number first. And the smallest number, y value in this graph is negative infinity because that's so small, it's crazy. And the highest value is your max value, which would actually be negative one. Okay, so it's a little bit different from the one we did before. Hopefully that was okay. You know, the best thing about flipping the classroom and watching your little notes at home is that you can go back and watch this if you need to. Okay, all right. Whew, two problems done. Not bad, right, class? All right, so now what we're going to do is we just have one little piece we're going to go to. Okay, and it's on our last page here. And this is a lot nicer than what we've just been doing because I'm sure some of you at home are probably feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Make sure I see you in the morning. Always is very helpful to come in for the morning, okay? Now here they give you a vertex and a point. So we got y equals a. Now to do these problems, you need to know the standard form of our vertex, which is this bad boy right and then what they're asking us to do is to write the equation of this parabola. Now, believe it or not, they give us the vertex. And the vertex always goes in here for your H and your K. So if I look at this 49, we're going to fill in the vertex first. So let's fill in that H and that K. So it'd be Y equals A, X minus 1 squared plus 2. T, N. Now, all I have to do to finish this thing is I have to find A. Now, how do you find A? Well, they give me another point to work with. So since they give me another point to work with, and that point is 2 comma negative 5, I'm going to put that in for X and that is in for Y, because that's what it is. And that's going to help me to find out what A is. Okay, just watch, just watch, watch, watch. It's like magic. Okay, we're going to put a negative 5 in there for Y. Okay, we're going to put a 2 in there for 1, 2 in there for X. And then we're going to do work. We're going to solve for A. Okay, please excuse my dear and Sally. Let's simplify a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, we did parentheses. Now we go to exponents. 1 squared is 1. When you do that, put it in front of the A. Okay, and then simplifying is done. So now we just solve. We're going to solve for A. 
All right, so hopefully we're okay with this. We're going to subtract 2, and I get negative 7 equals 1a divided by a 1, and I get a equals negative 7. And then I'm really done with the problem. I just have to write my final answer. Now, how do I write my final answer? It's y equals. So I wanted it to be in blue. Y equals. Okay, you put in your a, which is negative 7. Okay, and then you rewrite this thing with just your a back in it, okay? Because you have to have a y and an x. Because it is the, what we did a step before. Now, if you graph that, you could graph what that parabola would look like. Okay, we're going to do one more to make sure everybody is okay at home. Now, what your challenge is, is how quick of a learner are you? Challenge yourself right now. We're going to do 50. I ask you to be challenged, so I hope you will. I want you to do 50. I want you to hit pause right now, try 50, and let's see how you do. Okay, all right, here we go. You tried it. I hope you tried it. Okay, and then what we did is we uh, wrote down our formula first because we're trying to get the parabola in vertex form. That is the formula. We're going to use the vertex first. And remember, that's h and that's k. So now it's going to be y equals a. Now, if I put a negative 3 in for h, that's a negative with a negative, which is going to turn that to a positive. Okay, plus 6. Now, remember, we're going to use that other point. And to use that other point, we're going to call that x and that y. So we're going to come over here, and we're able to do that because we're able to say that it's all on the actual graph. Okay, so we got 1 plus 2 squared plus 6. Now we're going to do a little, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, so we get a little negative 2 equals. That would be uh, 4. Okay, that's doing parentheses. And then we use our exponents, which would be 16. And remember, I said to put in front. Okay, Gates? And then we just solve. Minus 6, minus 6. Now, be careful when you solve. A lot of students make mistakes right here. I'm going to divide by 16, and a lot of people think the answer is 2. No, it's not. No, it's not, because a is on this side, right? So it's negative 8 over 16, which reduces to negative 1. Okay, and then to be totally down, done with the problem, what you need to do is rewrite it. Boom, in vertex form, which would be y equals. We always put our a in there, which is negative 1 half, parentheses, and we put in our vertex. Okay, and that would be the standard form or the parabola or the vertex form of a parabola. Okay, and then you'd be able to graph that, right? The real reflection, that actually would be a vertical shrink of one half, three to the left, and six up. Booyahs, donezo, great job. Go back and watch it if you needed more help, or more importantly, I'll see you in the mountains. Aloha.